So today with us on Stuart Talk, we have with us a special guest. Here on Stuart Talk, we walk in our purpose on purpose, and today's guest is definitely doing that. Um, former standout um, player in the city of Toledo in Northwest Ohio, um, come from a great family, great basketball knowledge, IQ, um, and here he's leading young men to not just being basketball players, but being young men, developing, developing them for further education in the, the game of life. Today we have with us the one, the only, Coach Mike Floyd, how you doing today? Good, man. How you doing? Good, I'm good. Uh, for those that might don't know, that might have been sleeping under a rock, how did your basketball uh, journey start with you? Oh, man, where do I start? Um, you know, having two older brothers, you know, Eric and John, um, you know, I got started at a pretty young age, you know, and grew up kind of in the Springfield district and played in some leagues out there and, you um, Played at St. Joan of Arc and played kind of on a younger team that actually Coach Heinchel coached with his son, Teddy, um, and Coach Schoen over there at St. John's. Uh, we had like a little all-star group, third, fourth graders. Um, you know, then just moved on to St. John's and had to follow up my brother John's footsteps a little bit. And, you know, he kind of got me on the individual stuff. But, you know, you know, I was lucky and fortunate enough to be a part of a lot of really good teams there. Yeah. Played with a lot of really good players. Um, yeah, and then moved on to Defiance College and played four years there. Um, played with some local legends and Anthony Petaway and C.J. Johnson. Um, had some good years there and kind of just got into coaching right after college. And wow. coached in college for three years down in Georgia, three years in Indiana, and then kind of made my way back up north uh, when the central job came open and Got an opportunity to take the job, so I took it. Wow. What what uh, college did you um, coach down here in Georgia? Because that's where I'm at now. Okay, yeah, Piedmont University. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, about an hour, 15 minutes um, northeast of Atlanta there. Yeah. When you was growing up, how often, I know it was often, but did you used to allow people comparing you to your brother fuel you, or did you get tired of it? Like, I want to make my own mark. How did you, because when I used to go to the basketball camps, you were the youngest one out there shooting and all like that. And to mm -hmm. see, you know, your game, you know, was really, like, you had game too. So it was like, it didn't just stop with him. It continued on. Like, you was a great shooter. You were smart, you know, a team player. Like, how did that make you feel coming up? Um, yeah, you know, you, you keep hearing it and hearing it, um, you know, when you're younger and, um, you know, I was lucky just to kind of have that example that John set for, for me. Um, you know, obviously he was a really good player and, you know, he was a self-made player and, and worked really hard. Um, you know, everyone kind of, I kind of believed the hype a little too much, you know, everyone kept saying I was going to be better than him, And so I didn't work as hard as John did. Um, you know, so, um, you know, it's just, it still happens today. It's weird. Like I'll tell my brother, like, Hey, you ran into so-and-so and -so, like, we talked about this, this, and this just in case, you know, they hit you up or something because, you know, it's, uh, we look pretty alike and pretty similar. So, you know, people keep comparing us and, you know, I think he's getting kind of tired now that people recognize him as me. Um, I think that bothers him probably a little bit more than me getting compared to him. Yeah, have you ever ref one of your games or he can't since you his brother? How does that work? Yeah, he can't. You know, he's done some like scrimmages and like summer league stuff. Um, you know, and he like the opposing coach will always give me a hard time and, and <laughs> things like that. But yeah. the thing is, is like he he wouldn't I think I would trust him to ref one of our games, not because like he's gonna give me calls, just because he's a really good ref. So um, you know, it's <laughs> And I got to ask him about the famous technical with Coach Heinschel. I finally got to ask him. So you definitely right. He don't care who it is, mentor or not. He calling the game how it's supposed to be, you know, and that's just speak to, you know, how you guys was brought up in your family, you know, just the respect and, you know, the nature that uh, of basketball and just being right, professionalism, you know, that you guys exhibit. Have you ever had a chance to coach against Coach Heinschel or did he retire while you was coaching? Um, yeah, so I had, I coached against them for two years. Um, my first game I ever coached as a head coach was actually against St. John's. Um, you know, we, uh, the, obviously the football program at Central is a powerhouse and, um, you know, we kind of pushed some games back and they happened to lose, I think in the regional final that year. 
in football. So we had two weeks to kind of get everybody ready. And I had 10 guys coming from football my oh. very first year. So it was like, I said, you know what, let's just roll the dice, like two weeks, let's figure it out. And, you know, no better way to, to start the career than playing St. John's at home, you know, in a rivalry game. And, you know, it was, I'm sure coach Heinz would say this, like he probably is just another game for him, you know, but, you know, it was kind of cool going against them and um, going against St. John's just from a different perspective and and being on the other sideline. Yeah. Did you know, like, where he was going to run being you been in that system? Did he switch anything up? Did he tweak anything? Or was you like, yeah, I know this coming. We just got to stop it. Um, you know, you, you know some of the defensive calls and kind of some things that they're going to do there. Um, and he kill, still had, had some of, like, the staple offensive sets that they used to run, but – you know, the game has changed so much since I played that there's so many, you know, different actions that, you know, Coach Schoen was an assistant at the time. And he kind of had a lot of say in what they did offensively. And, you know, he was doing some different things that were, you know, a little bit more suited for the modern game and um, or the times, I guess I should say. And, um, you know, but you still like, you know, he calls out gold, you know, he's a man to man, you know, he calls out red, you know, he's in two, three. And, you know, you still remember that stuff because it's just ingrained and in, in kind of like what you do. <laughs> yeah. How do you describe your coaching style and philosophy as of now as a coach? Is it similar to where you were a player or is it different now? And how has it evolved? Uh, I would say uh, it's pretty similar. Uh, when I first started, I was probably, you know, just like any other probably dumb young coach that thinks he knows everything and, you know, I'm pretty fiery and you're yelling at the refs too much. And, you know, so I've had to kind of learn how to control my demeanor a little bit on the sideline um, and improve in that area so that I can kind of think and be cerebral about the game as it's going on and, and try to make adjustments for our guys and put our players in the best spots to be successful. Um, you know, but I'm still competitive. I um, still want to be, you know, beat everybody that we play and, you know, we hold our guys accountable and, you know, it's very similar. You know, I've picked up a lot of things from a lot of different coaches and a lot of what I do is what I learned at a young age, just being around Coach Heinchel for so long. Yeah. What are some key principles you focus on in developing your um, team each season? Well, we kind of, we have some core values that we talk about a lot. You know, toughness is one of them, you know, and it's not just being physically tough. It's, you know, hey, mentally, can we get through some adversity and when things aren't going around, um, going our way as a group? Um, do we come together and try to fight through that? Um, trust is a big thing that we talk about. You know, there's and there's a lot of different levels of trust. You know, our guys got to trust each other. Our coaches got to trust each other. The players got to trust the coaches. We got to trust the players. Parents got to trust us with their kids. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we don't take that responsibility lightly. Um you know, you're trying to develop young men, you know, you want to, as a parent, you want to make sure your kids in, in the right hands, um, you know, and then we talk about selflessness, you know, to be a part of a really good team, like you need guys that are willing to sacrifice for each other and kind of give themselves to the team. And, you know, just being around some of the teams I've been fortunate to be on, like, you know, Brian Roberts plays in the NBA, like he gave up some stuff, he sacrificed so that our team could be good, you know, like, when he has BJ Raymond next to him, like, you yeah. know, there's times where BJ kind of has to go off and, you know, BJ had to sacrifice for Brian, and, you know, and Zach Hillsland and, and all those guys, um, you know, and I kind of had to sacrifice a little bit my senior year, you know, I played three years of varsity basketball. And then as a senior, you're thinking, Hey, it's my turn. And <laughs> I'm up next. And, you know, we got John Dunn, who's a really good player. Andrew Taylor, who's a really good player. And it's like Joe Jakubowski. It's like, all right, I got to kind of find my role in, in my niche. So, you know, we tell our guys and try to preach things that like there's things that we've never done ourselves. You know, it's, um, you know, just holding them accountable to those type of standards. And then, you know, we want to be a really good defensive team, trying to make it hard for other teams to score. And then we try to get out and play fast and, and put our guys in space and, and kind of let them showcase what their talents are. Yeah. And I've seen one thing that your team uh, exemplifies is your DNA by never giving up, never quit. You guys beat my Bulldogs last year uh, for that title, which was a great game, but they didn't give it up. They didn't give up. And the one player that hit the shot, he kind of missed before. 
but he had faith in his shot and he ended up hitting the winning, you know, the winning shot to help y'all win. So I see that they never give up. They're resilient and it ain't over to it's over. And that's always been the St. John's teams. We had, had y'all beat and we had think the game over and here, just like your brother's senior year too. That oh, game. Yeah, was like, <laughs> yeah, so it's like, it never changes and you're allowing your team to see that. Um, How many upperclassmen did you guys lose? Uh, So we graduated two seniors. Um, you know, Isaiah Brenneman, he played four years of varsity basketball. Um, he's going on to play at Heidelberg University. Um, and then Darnell Emery was, um, you know, played some JV a little bit as a junior. And then really what I'm most proud about him is like he got it in the classroom and kind of got his life on track to like be successful after high school and not just a basketball thing. Yeah. He's going to play kind of on the reserve team at Tiffin University. So we lost those two guys. Um, you know, and then we only have one senior next year, and we're still pretty loaded with a lot of sophomores and juniors coming back. So, yeah. How many titles or um, districts or sectionals have you guys won? Um, We've won three district championships and then one league championship since I've been there. Okay. And I know the ultimate goal is the state. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We're kind of, uh, we're kind of at a point right now where we're, kind of sick and tired of being like a, a regional participant. We want to try to, you know, take that next step as a group and a program. And um, yeah. our, our guys are kind of, they're motivated to get past where we were last year. Yeah. How important is it to continue to have the community support and what would you do to continue to engage in the community to get good players and good student athletes to come to Central? Yeah. You know, that's one thing that, um, you know, when I got the Central, you know, you you always kind of observe Central from the outside and, you know, they always had the big student sections, the school spirit. And, um, you know, once I got there, it was like, man, this place is completely different than St. John's. Um, you know, it's and that's not like a bad thing. It's just St. John's is different than Central as Central is different than St. Francis, you know, or any other school. Um, you know, it's truly a family close knit type atmosphere that over there at uh, central. And, um, you know, we're really lucky to be a part of that, having great student support, great community support. Um, you know, obviously the better the team you are, the more support you're going to get, you know, I think that's universal, you know, so we want to continue to keep being successful and, and putting a team out there that, you know, our alumni and, you know, and our supporters are really proud to kind of call their own, um, you know, and you kind of touched on it, like, we don't give up no matter what the score is and being a team that plays together and, and tries to share the basketball and play hard and competes and has an element of toughness, you know, so, you know, we try to do things just with my college background too, is like, you know, we treat it like it's a college program, just, you know, best players play, no matter how old you are, um, you, you're going to have opportunities to come in compete and show what you can do. And, um, you know, and, and we don't take for granted, you know, the type of the really good athletes we get from the community and then just the support we get from the community as well. Yeah. So for um, middle school kids or people looking to transfer, what could you say that you have to offer and offer in your basketball program and your school have to offer um, academically? Yeah, you know, Central is a place where, um, you, you know, you're not going to fall through the cracks. You know, there's people there that care about you. Um, that are invested in your future and what you want to do after you leave Central Catholic. Um, you know, you get a, a great faith-based education that, you know, once you're done, now you're part of a network that has 25,000 plus alumni throughout the country and the world. Um, you know, and that's at your fingertips to use for connections or, um, you know, job opportunities or networking opportunities, whatever it may be. Um, you know, and then I think the unique thing about Central is like you get everybody from the city, just every different area. Um, you, you know, you have kids from Savannah, Perrysburg, Anthony Wayne, kind of the outskirts. And you have kids from the inner city. You have kids from Springfield. Like there's I think we were 60 to 65 different grade schools that are represented at Central. Um, you know, so just the diversity of learning to work with people that are different than you um because that's what the real world is you know you have to learn how to 
um, work together with people so that you can be successful yourself or your organization can be successful. So, um, you know, I, it's a great education. People care about you. It's faith-based and, you know, you, you get to kind of interact with people like it's the real world. Yeah. Um, when it's all said and done, what do you want your legacy to be as a coach for um, Central and even as a, a man at Central? Man, I haven't really thought about this too much. <laughs> um, you know, I think legacy, man, I'm still in my 30s. But, um, you know, I, I just want the guys to know that I cared, um, you know, and I want guys to be successful in, in whatever they do, whether they're great husbands, great fathers, um, great employees, great basketball player, whatever it may be. Um, you know, I, I, I want them to know that, Hey, my phone's, I'm only a phone call away, you know, and they can always, always get in touch with me and, um, you know, just kind of doing things the right way and producing guy, producing young men that are, you know, functioning members of society that are doing well and that can help, you know, the world be a better place. Yeah. How has it been with the new league? Um, do you guys find it more difficult? Is it the same, just more competition? How is it with the um, broadening out league with the Detroit teams? Do, do you guys play the same teams in basketball as they do in football or is it different schedule wise? Yeah. So uh, UD Jesuit is in the lower division for football, but in the upper division for basketball. Okay. Um, other than that, it's pretty, pretty much the same. Um, you know, it's a, <laughs> Well, we didn't have much success in the league last year. We didn't win a game, you know, and, um, you know, the Toledo teams actually in all league games went one in 17 against all the Detroit teams. Like, it's just, it's a different animal, you know, it's, it's, there's 4 million plus people in Metro Detroit and there's what 400,000 in Toledo area that you're kind of your pool of students that you're picking from. So it's just apples and oranges a little bit, but, you know, like St. John's was really competitive in the league. Um, you know, we had stretches where we were competitive. We were just too young probably to be, yeah. to kind of get over that hump. We had, you know, De La Salle and DCC. We actually had them beat and just kind of lost it there in the last couple of minutes. But, um, you know, you're playing multiple Division One players every night. Um, and I was actually talking to Coach Heitchell about this a couple of weeks ago in Coach Schoen. Like it's very equivalent to kind of like the, what the city league was back in the nineties in like eighties, like where teams were just loaded with talent, um, you know, and of course guys that I'm coaching now, they have no idea how good the city used to be back in the day. Um, you know, and shoot, I, I barely remember it, you know, since I was born in the eighties, but you just hear stories of how good those teams were. And I can imagine like what we're seeing now is, you know, like Trey McKinney, he's the number 15 player in the country in the class of 2025. Um, you know, last year, Monty Williams' kid was at Brother Rice. He was the number six player in the country. Um, mm. The Pistons kind of did, did everyone a favor and, you know, <laughs> no longer there anymore. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's just – it's you got guys every night. You know, I, I tell our guys, like, hey, you're going against a Division One guard every night, you know, and you get to kind of stat see where you stack up against those guys and – you know, the coaching's really good too. So it's, um, you know, I wouldn't want it any other way. You know, I want to compete against the best and kind of see where we're at. Because at the end of the day, your regular season record doesn't really mean anything. Everyone makes the state tournament. And if you're well prepared, I think that's what helped us last year. We got our brains beat in a little bit in that league. And you come back and you're playing some teams in Division Two in Toledo area. It's just not the same as playing you know, St. Mary's who went 28 and one and won a state championship up there. So, you know, yeah. it's, um, I think it prepares us well for what we want to do long-term with our program. Yeah. What, what do you think you will take this year um, from last year to allow them to see that no matter what their record is, no matter who they're going up against, that they can win and they can be on the winning end of the stick and just to have their mentality is different. Yeah, I think the success that we had at the end of the season last year is really going to help. Um, you know, we hit a six game win streak there. You know, you win 12 games or 12 and 15 last year and, you know, you finish six and one to finish your year. Um, you know, I think you can use that momentum as like a little teaser for them. Like, hey, we're close. We're there. 
we have a chance to be really competitive in our state tournament. Like we have to get stronger. We have to get bigger physically. And, you know, we have to tighten up our skill work stuff and, you know, and, and just like, we're asking our guys to tighten some things up and get better. Like we got to get better as a staff. And, um, you know, if the adults aren't getting better in the room, the kids aren't going to get better. So, right. you know, I think we can use that as like, man, we're, we're tasting it a little bit and we're close, but like I said earlier, like I'm tired of being a regional participant. Like now, what are we doing as a program and in individuals to kind of move ourselves forward? You know, and, and I've been, we had a great summer with our guys. Um, we were, played some really competitive teams and, you know, we got better throughout the summer and, you know, kind of finished on a high note. And I think they're kind of chomping at the bit to get practice started and get going. Yeah. Last couple of questions. I get you out of here. Um, what advice would you give to young high school players who are trying to develop their game and just be the best athlete they could be? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I just focusing on just the basic fundamentals, um, you know, like, and I'm sure, you know, like Thomas Carr, you know, he's coaching at, at Louisville now, yeah. you know, as an assistant. And, you know, I texted him, I said, Hey, if you're six feet and six, two and under, what are, what's going to make you want to recruit that kid? You know, and he just gives me bullet points. Like, wow. well, they better be able to guard 94 feet. They have a two to one assist to turnover ratio and they got to shoot 40%, just catch and shoot from three, 40 percent plus you know just like so it's basic fundamentals like and a lot of our guys in this area are six two and kind of uh, and below and it's like so what are you doing there's tens of thousands of guys that are just like you how do you stick out um right. you know so I would tell guys like be an elite shooter you know you don't need a ton of dribble moves in your bag if you're an elite shooter you look at Steph Curry like yeah he has a tight handle but just the threat of him catching the ball, people are running at him and he's able just to, you know, rip the ball and just go one, like, you know, one, two dribbles. And now someone else is coming over and just make a play. Um, yeah. So I think the fundamentals have kind of gotten lost a little bit. Um, just, Hey, can you catch and shoot threes? Can you play off two feet effectively? Um, can you finish around the rim, you know, and then, kind of expand your game once you have that those things down um would be my kind of suggestions because once you move up the better and better players are but the easier theoretically the easier the game should be if you have a lot of good players around you that can do different things and um you know hey can you move the ball on time can yeah. your your passes hit the target um you know and then i think what Thomas said was really, really rang true. Like, Hey, if you're a point guard, can you pick up 94 feet and just bother the other team's point guard? Um, you know, and can you defend and keep guys in front of you so that they don't have to get in a rotation, you know? So just basic fundamentals and just continue to work on that and, and probably just run your own race. You know, you can't compare yourself to anybody else, you know, because somebody else may be blessed right now at, at a certain age with certain height or, attributes but it doesn't mean that you can't make that ground up in a yeah. year or two with you know maybe you grow late or you know maybe your opportunity comes a little later and you take advantage of it because you're more ready um and you've been competing and you're a little bit more hungry than them at that point you know it just I think a lot of times people compare and like want the instant gratification of like well why don't I have an offer now and yeah so-and-so has an offer. I should have one. And it's like, well, your race just might be at a different pace. Doesn't mean you won't get to the same spot. So. Yeah. yeah and, and then you even know by playing high level basketball, um, like I talked to your brother, I had a uh, T coach TJ Gillespie on, he was talking about his Mount union experience. So it's like, it don't really matter where you go. Cause they're going to be able to find you, but can you dominate or can you be a great player at that level so many people you know compare themselves and comparison is a thief of joy so now mm -hmm. you can't even be the best player that you're going to be because you're worried about you know other players so what you're saying is definitely true and definitely needed what advice would you have for up and coming coaches that's trying to coach at a high level like yourself 
uh, just take any opportunity that you get. You know, my first college job, um, well, my first coaching job was coaching junior high at Ottawa Hills. Someone just, and I was still kind of finishing up some college credits that I needed, um, you know, and I didn't really know if I was going to go into coaching at that point, but like I had an internship for like a real job. And my favorite part of the day was going to that practice. I kind of got re-energized and it kind of spoke to me like, Hey, I'm meant to kind of do this. Um, but even the job down in Georgia, I didn't see the campus. I didn't meet the coach in person. I just did a phone interview, but I wanted to get into college coaching so bad. I was so, I was just willing to take kind of any opportunity that I got because it's hard, yeah. um, you know, and if you're, if you want to be a high school coach, I think trying to just get involved in a program that you think is successful or does things kind of how you would want to do them and try to learn from those people. Um, and then when you're there, show some initiative and, um, you know, do the film work, even if it's not great, try to do it and get, um, you know, some constructive criticism on how to improve on like what to clip, what to look for, do your own scouting reports and, and see how they compare to what the head coach is doing. Um, ask questions, go to clinics, watch, you know, everything's available on YouTube right now. Um, you know, there's, so there's no reason not to get the information that you need. Um, but you just got, if it's something that you want to do, you got to really dive in with two feet and you can't have one foot in one foot out. Yeah. So that'd be my advice. Yeah. Did you you guys just won the championship at the top notch or was that old or is that um, recently in the league? <laughs> uh, Yeah, it was in May. You know, I kind of got picked up. I think actually the team thought I was John, so I wasn't as good as they thought I was going to be, um, <laughs> which is fine. But, you know, I was just trying to stay in shape a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it was a good group of guys. You know, it was fun to kind of be a part of it. And I haven't played in the men's league since my 20s. So, um, do your players know how good you used to be? Because I know you don't tell them. <laughs> well, I've actually, I had to hop in practice a couple times this year. Just we were missing some guys. And, um, you know, I make sure I do things I'm really good at and try yeah. not to stay away from the things I'm not good at. <laughs> so, you know, so I don't, uh, you know, embarrass myself too much. But, you know, I can still hold, the, hold my own a little bit. I just can't go up and down the court as many times as I used to. So yeah. <laughs> uh, we thank you. We're spotlighting you because like I said, you're a great coach and you're developing young men. And I had a couple of your men, your young players on and just to hear what they learned from you, just to hear what you instilled inside you, just, just to see your efforts and see that you're giving back and you're pouring into them. And I know it's like you on the team when you out there coaching them because I know your love for the game. So, you know, I just pray that God continue to bless you, that he give you the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding that you need, that he give you favor on the coach, on the court, favor with the young men, and may he continue to bless you and your team and your program, and may it develop and continue to build great young men that's going to, you know, be something one day, and they will have you to be able to say, Hey, Coach Floyd helped me. He helped me realize this, or you will be in their head when they're making a decision in life and in sports um, as they go to the next level. So we just thank you. No, thanks. I appreciate, uh, you know, you having me on. And, you know, I think it's awesome what you're doing, spotlighting a lot of different people from the Toledo area. And, yeah. you know, we, the world needs positive news and, um, you know, more positive in it than negative than what we usually get from you know, kind of media outlets. So, yeah. you know, I appreciate you doing your thing. And, and like I said, spotlighting a lot of positive people in the city. Yeah, yeah. But we're going to be sharing you. We're going to, um, you know, be continue to spotlight your program and allow people to see what they can get and even to see what you guys are doing because um, you're doing amazing. I mean, y'all going to get over the hump in that league because I know the character. I know the competitor inside you. You ain't going to sleep until you understand what you need to do to get them to be how they supposed to be. Yeah, you know, we're going to keep working. And, um, you know, I think we can be a little bit more competitive in that league this year. We got to. You know, if you are in this, you're watching, you know, come check us out. We got a really young, good, young, talented group um, that I think has a chance to be really special. So, Yeah, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, Coach Mike Floyd. All right, thanks. Yep.